Hey. Here we are. Another Monday, another state. <sighs> Just exhaling to prep myself. Even wrote some notes down to keep myself a little bit focused as we do these. And I don't know if, a little preamble beforehand, I don't know if many of you remember when I went on my vacation to Iceland, I believe, for a couple of episodes, I just did some random states, mostly around New England, and one of them was today's. And I remember at the time saying, it was just like, I don't really care about this day too much. It doesn't really do anything for me. It just kind of exists. It doesn't really have much, at least to me, in the form of like interesting history, but you know, a little bit of bias, I guess. If you're kind of like, I just don't like New Hampshire as a state. We're doing that, by the way. It kind of just frames all the other facts or whatnot about it. Like, whenever I... I don't really ever go to New Hampshire, per se. It's just more like a thing I drive through to get to somewhere else. But I did a little bit of reading, and I don't know if much has changed, but... I'll try to be a little bit impartial, other than just saying, eh, it's okay. But here we are. We start with some New Hampshire. Here we are. Four minutes, as you can say, here's New Hampshire up here in the, uh, what we call New England, which is from Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. These are the New England states. New Hampshire's kind of just like smack dab in the middle of it as it is bordered by Maine, Canada, Vermont, Massachusetts, and the uh, Atlantic Ocean. It apparently has the uh, shortest ocean coastline of any state in the, uh, in the United States, with approximately 18 miles, which is about 29 kilo kilometers long. And Hampton Beach is a popular summer destination, which I've only been to once. And there's Hampton. There's Hampton Beach. Yeah, it's okay. Anyway, we're going to click along here and try to find out where we are. But I'm probably not going to be able to figure out where it is. I'll give you some uh, information about the state here, I guess. Um, it was admitted to the Union on uh, June 21st, 1788, which made it the ninth state. Its um, capital is Concord, which is right there, but its largest city is Manchester. Um, Way back in the day, well, actually, we'll get to that later. The tenth least populous state, with only about 1.3 million people living here. It's the fifth smallest by area, which, as you can see, it is kind of a little tiny state here compared to some of the other ones, like Nevada, we just did, which was massive, comparatively speaking. Um, you may not be aware of it. I don't know. You may have heard this parlance at some point in. Your life, but like live free or die. If you've ever actually heard that said anywhere, or just like, what the hell does that mean, or where did that come from? It's actually the uh, motto of the state of New Hampshire, but you know, it's used in other places. But anyway, I'm gonna get up to this intersection and maybe see a road sign or something to kind of let me know where we are. I'm hoping. Seems to be a memorial of sorts for whatever this town is. Uh, hoping to see something to let me know where we are. I got a minute left. Seeing painted um, crosswalks. Ooh, we do have a the local fire station. Rye, New Hampshire. I don't know if I'm ever actually going to see that in here. Is it a big enough town? to show up. Probably not, but I'm just going to do a quick look. Oh, I've been to Loudoun before for a race. But besides the point, we have to try to find maybe a uh, highway sign or something here. School zone. Come on. We've got lots of... Uh, political stuff here. Man, I don't know if I'm going to see it in time. Come on, please. Give me uh, a root sign or something here. 
Wallace and Washington. This just says, yeah, we're in, we're in Rye, but that doesn't help me. Please. Something. It's a nice little town here, but I'm not getting anything to help me where we are in general here. Like a root sign or something? All right, I got to make a guess. I'm going to say we're in the south. Maybe around Keene. Let's just do a quick look. If it'll pop up anywhere in my purview. No, we were actually close to the shore, and there was, I don't know if I was ever going to see that in time. I eyeballed over this section quite a bit. Uh, anyway, quick thing about Live Free Die. I'll just talk about it real quick. Uh, it was adopted by the state in 1945, possibly best known of all state models, probably because it conveys an assertive independence historically found in American political philosophy, and partly because of its contrast with mildler sentiments found in other state models. Well, New Hampshire doesn't fuck around, I guess. The phrase was adopted from a toast written by General John Stark, New Hampshire's most famous soldier of the American Revolutionary War. On July 31st, 1809, poor health forced Stark to decline an invitation to an anniversary reunion of the Battle of Bennington, which I believe was right over here. Let's see if I can see it real quick. Yeah. And instead, he sent a toast by letter Live free or die. Death is not the worst of evils. And even though the state goes nuts for it, it kind of isn't. It, he didn't originate it. I mean, by the time he wrote it, Viva Libra u Morir, which is apparently a, fr a popular French motto for the French Revolution. Um, English romantic poet Williams Wordworth also adopted this revolutionary motto when he composed the line, We must be free or die who speak the tongue that Shakespeare wrote. Excuse me. Anyway, it's like live for your die, don't tread on me, or don't step on snick, things like that, if you've heard those before. Anyway, enough about that. Being that it's up here, there is a bit of the White Mountains and a lot of, I guess, interest or revenue, I guess you could say, like, hobbies there's a lot of skiing outdoor wreck stuff hiking snowmobiling um i mean at a point there were manufacturing centers like manchester or nassau even though it says nashua i believe it's nassau we're home to a lot of manufacturing of like see here we've got what was it called you got textiles, shoemaking, paper making, things like that. But in the 30s and 40s, 1930s, 1940s, along with a lot of other places in the north, um, manufacturing jobs left to go to the south or overseas. And they were kind of just in a bit of a economic depression there for a while until the 50s and 60s when defense contractors came in to take up the slack or spots, you could say. A lot of, well, also, a lot of interstates were, <clears throat> excuse me, mouth is a little dry. A lot of interstates built around the area here also led to things that are kind of called bedroom communities, which basically mean um, you can live in towns way outside of a city, like, say, Boston, like this, and you can take, like, a train, which is pretty, I mean, Compared to other places in the world, trains are pretty ubiquitous in, say, like, Europe as a means of transportation between places, but they never really caught on in the U.S., and mainly the only place it kind of has the most is the Northeast. And what a lot of people will do is take a train into work to, say, places like Boston, which, yeah, it's a bit of a drive, but if you take a train, it's faster. And what they'll do is work their train commute out to places like Salem, Nassau, Wynnum, or other places where it's cheaper to live compared to living in Boston. If you are not aware of rent prices in Boston, or any metropolitan area, they're insane. So why not save money and just commute a bit, maybe like an hour on a train? I don't know exactly how long it is, but I know a lot of people who do that. Interesting stuff, you could say. Uh, moving along... 
elevation, man. I got myself a little distracted here. The lowest place is only a thousand feet, and the highest elevation is uh, Mount Washington, which is 6,288 feet, which is almost 2,000 meters. Mount Washington is the highest peak in northeastern U.S. and the most topo topographically prominent mountain east of the Mississippi River. And it gets windy as fuck on Mount Washington in a lot of places, like, uh, or a lot of companies like L.L. Bean or North Face or other uh, outdoor gear companies will test their clothes on the uh, peak of Mount Washington. It's just a thing. I mean, you can kind of brag about it. You could probably build your own, like, room to do that shit yourself, but I guess you can save money by doing that. Ooh, we do have a root sign, South 123. Now I gotta try to find that. 123. Oh, we do have it here. Look at that. How big of a road is it? It appears to be long enough, so I'm a bit, I'm a bit concerned. We were at an intersection. Let's back it up just a scope here. 12A. All right. 12A. Look at that. And we actually did. Oh my God, I ran out of time. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm mad. <laughs> Oh, I just got so distracted. I hate when that happens. You know, you, 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 this cycle just repeats. You, you forget one time, then you get super adamant about making sure that never happens again until you don't get adamant and then it happens again. And the cycle repeats. And here we are doing that again. Oh, man. I'm bummed. We, I was just about to click. I was just about to click. I could have got ourselves some good points there. But I didn't learn from my mistakes, folks, if nothing else. Let's see what this sign said. But <clears throat> the uh, root logos they use for the state, it's kind of this, the, the granite face. If you've actually ever seen um, state quarters, which were a, a thing they were doing, in the around the year 2000, I mean, a little afterwards, I think they would release each state had their own quarter. And if you ever look at the uh, quarter for New Hampshire, it says "Live free or die," and it's just like what looks like a face on the side of a mountain. And it no longer looks like that because, due to well erosion, which happens the nose fell off it, so it's no longer this face on the side of a mountain anymore. I forget exactly when it fell off, but you'll have it, I guess. I don't know where this is. I've not seen anything to let me know, but I have to do a balancing act of finding a sign to let me know what route we're on, even though that just says speed limit, and telling you more amazing facts about New Hampshire that you really didn't think you needed to know. Weirdly enough, I didn't know this myself, that the median household income is about $73,000, which, again, is surprising, but also when you consider things like the uh, bedroom communities, like I said, where people would move or just take commute into places like Boston where they make a bunch of money and then they save their money. And also there's no taxes, really. And uh, there's no, what was it, state tax, no sales tax or income tax, other than interest on dividends in the state. Um, I guess other history stuff, it really doesn't matter. You can kind of assume how most, like, history as far as um, New Hampshire is, is no different than any others. Calling this game, hey, look, Indians, let's trade. Okay, all right, we're, we don't want to trade with you anymore. Too bad, we want it. And fight, fight, fight. And they eventually took their stuff. I mean, I'm really horribly uh, being reductive here, but... Man, why can't 
there be any signage anywhere. We're getting to a bit of a Benson Park, town of Hudson, New Hampshire. See, I got the names of these places. The problem is they're so... Like, I don't know where the hell Hudson is. I'm just going to say around there just to actually click one. Because I have a problem doing that. <laughs> Hudson. Not seeing it. We're getting up here in the... No man's land up here. Yeah, we were super far south. This again is just going to be one of the worst. Let's go ahead and Hudson. Oh, Hudson's over there, right next to NASA. Well then. One of the worst rounds we're going to do, just because I didn't click. And that probably would have been a good 4,000 points at least I'd give myself. But what are you going to do? Be an idiot. Um. Anyway, talking about the northern third here, which is called North of the Notches, which is kind of like these notches here, like basically eh and up. It's a reference to the White Mountain Passes that channel traffic. It contains less than 5% of the state populations and suffers relatively high poverty and is already losing population as logging and paper industries decline. It's starting to slowly come back with some uh, tourism, but eh, it probably isn't enough to really make too much of a dent. Okay, was there some other stuff here? Uh, I did think I forgot to mention, at least with Nevada, last week, uh, New Hampshire's kind of the same deal, where the majority of the people in the state are non-religious, when the polls, when, like, polled on it. White Mountains Hypnosis Center. Creepy. 36%. Um, oh, God, no. Get me out of here. We're going to get home and go the other way. Yeah, we're going this way. With Protestants being 30%, 26 Catholic. Uh, quick scan through some more stuff here. Oh, the other big thing with New Hampshire that it really has, you could say, it's the first place that has uh, primaries. Which is like, okay, you got someone who wants to be the Democratic or Republican candidate for presidency. The first, like, I guess you could say, popular decision, or what, what's it called? Like, each political party has their vote in the state. And whichever person gets the most out of that kind of gives you a good litmus test for how well they'll do in the rest of the country. So if, like there's a ton of people going, and you get, like, one vote, you might as well just bow out now. I mean, granted, winning that doesn't mean you're going to win every other primary afterwards, but it's just a good litmus test, you could say. To preserve. Clinton, something that doesn't help me. I've only seen one root sign, so... I'm scoring this on, like, Visibility and knowledge of road signage compared to other states. This is super low. Fireworks are illegal in Madison County, I'm thinking. Village District of Edelweiss. Hmm. Hopefully something. This is probably just a speed limit sign. No, we're... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to find Edelweiss. Like, I'm not seeing a root sign anywhere. I got 45 seconds left. I am very worried. Community market in Delhi. Not helping me. Edelweiss. I'll say we're here. In the mountains somewhere. Just in the middle of the state until something pops up and says otherwise. Bethlehem, Whitefield, Northumberland. Yep, nothing. I'm still real chaffed about not getting that other one. Oh well. Is there anything else 
real quick. I want to talk. Yeah, way, way the fuck up here. I'm just. Oh, the show's up right there. Okay. I, there was no way I was going to see that. Maybe I'll get over a thousand. <laughs> oh, goodness. We've got Candia Highlands. Hmm. This is a town like Candia or something. I don't know. Let's just keep going. Other things of interest about New Hampshire. I don't know. Kind of got them all. I mean, there's some good colleges here. You got Dartmouth, which is kind of like a prestigious, super old school school. It was founded in 1769. Well, it's a little blurb. It said, ninth oldest institution of higher education in the U.S. It's one of the nine colonial colleges chartered before America actually became a country. And there's no sports here. There's some minor league stuff. Ain't much. Let's see here. But we have a list in New Hampshire first. I'll do these for the last little bit. Is I am. Oop, mums are in. So this is in the fall. Mums are a thing they always sell in the fall. Don't add, it's just a, just a type of flower. I just like calling them mums. Now give me a sign. Please. Something I can read. Totally find out where we are. What do we got? Clinton is crushing. You register to vote Trump. Don't tell me my neighbors. I'm voting Republican. One good reason. This guy doesn't really have a yard, but he seems to be sandwich boarding his stuff there so everyone can read it as he drives by. Oh, and they're selling, it looks like, cars in the back of it? Or, yeah. What do we got here? He says, give him a chance, folks. Let's go. Find some more. Oh, I got a minute 40. I don't know where the fuck this is. It's just so ambiguous here. That was a house fire at Candia. I don't know where the fuck Candia is. I've not seen any road signs letting me know that either. There's been one. You know, it's potentially that I just got the roads that had no roots on them, but I had to go a long way to find that one. <sighs> anyway, some facts. New Hampshire firsts. January 5th, 1776. At Exeter Provincial College, New Hampshire ratified the first independent constitution of the Americas, free of British rule. I'm putting us in the middle because fuck if I know where we are. There's Canaan, but it's Candia. That's, that's not the same thing. I've given up. If I get over a thousand, great. At this point, I deserve what I get. June 12th, 1800, Fernald's Island on the Pixaquata River became the first government-sanctioned U.S. Navy shipyard. Uh, 1822, Dublin's Juvenile Library was the first free public library. 1828, first women's strike in the nation took place at Dover's Cochico Mills, or Cocheco. 1833, Peter Burrow. Town Library was the first public library supported with public funds in the world. August 3rd, 1852, Center Harbor was the site of the first intercollegiate athletic event, where Harvard defeated Yale in a two-mile rowing race at Lake Winnip Winnipesaukee. The first meeting in a rivalry that continues to this day. Yeah, I, I know it was going to be a bad score. I'm fine. Oh, there, Candy actually did show up there, but... It was terrible. It was terrible from the start when I didn't click that one. Let's do some other ones real quick here. June 27th, 1874, first transatlantic telecommunication, telecommunication cable between Europe and America stretched from Bain Skelligs Bay, Ireland to Rye, New Hampshire. Hey, look at that. It actually, from here to there, that's where it started. How about that? Graves of Spanish sailors. Weird. Any other really good ones here? <clears throat> hmm. 
Hmm. Blah, blah, blah. First American in space was Alan Shepard of Derry. D-E-R-R-Y. New Hampshire. Ralph Baer of Sanders Associates, NASWA, recruited engineers to develop the first home video game. Christina McCulphy of Concord became the first private citizen selected to venture into space. And she was on the Challenger, which, if you're not aware, blew up on takeoff. January 28, 1986. May 17, 1996. New Hampshire became the first state in the country to install a green LED traffic light. And it was selected. The reason why is because New Hampshire was the f selected because it was the first state to install red and yellow variety lights statewide. And finally, May 31st, 2007, according to Wikipedia, there could be some other ones. <laughs> New Hampshire became the first state to recognize same sex unions without a court order or the threat of one. That's going to do it. I'm really mad about that one. I did terribly. Just got awful. But let the score not pass you. Hopefully you at least learned something about New Hampshire. Pass my salt. But that's going to do it for Monday. Again, thank you all for watching. If you did not check out the video from Sunday, we'll be doing that quick little 15-minute guess of as many states as I could. Go check it out. It's up. Um, I'd like to thank again Lemons for giving me that to try out. If you have any suggestions for maps, games, ideas, or anything else, go ahead and put them in the comments below, along with all your like, favorite, comments, subscribes, comments, questions, concerns, complaints, suggestions, insights, theories, I don't know, whatever you want. Go ahead and put them there. I will read them and get back to you. Uh, the week has started. Wednesday will be here before you know it, and I'll be here waiting. So until then, folks. Have a good one. We'll see you real soon.